here to talk a few things about aviation, but more than that, I'd like to emphasize a few things that I've been doing all around the world, going around different parts of the world, meeting youngsters, all uh, youth, the new generations that I believe in so much, you know. I've had this opportunity to meet a number of talented youth. They are trying to do something for this nation, but they are looking for a platform through which they really want to show their talents. There are always two sides of the coin, head or tail. There are always two sides of everything that you do in life. You talk about day, there's night. You talk about black, there's white. You talk about failures, there's success. And you talk about negativity, there are positivity. This country at the moment is going through a lot of negativity. Even when you are doing the right stuff at the right time, there is nobody, there are very few people, they would accept that and say, hey, you are doing it right. There's no word of encouragement. We need to start believing in ourselves, owning up to be what you are, owning up to your position, owning up to your corporation, owning up to your seat that you are sitting and saying, this is where I belong, this is what I do, and this is what I believe in. If only we did this, this country would be different. I have seen Nepal the way that most of you have not seen. I've seen the beauty of our country. I've seen the beauty of our nature, the ampleness in the resources that we have. But still, we are lacking. There's only one thing that is behind that. It's because our thought process is so poor. That's why I keep telling people, I keep going around the world and I keep telling everybody, not only Naples, I keep telling everybody, Mind is a very powerful tool. It can make you or break you. Choice is all yours. Do you want to accept the negativity and say, woo, I can't do this. This is the end of the road. Hey, that's your choice. Or you say, look, I had problems. It was there, but I'm doing now. Tomorrow, I'm going to do something better. The positive thought always brings it. I'm an airline captain. I've been flying for the last 32 years. That's a long time. But before I started flying, I started acting. I've been performing in Naples movies since the last 38 years. That's a long time. And that tells you how old I am also. <laughs> An old man standing right here <laughs> with a gray hair, right? <laughs> and after that, you see, I, w I, was, I was an airline captain in that movie, it was uh, Adar Shinari. I got inspired. After doing Adar Shinari, it felt so good. I keep telling people, there was a shoot at, uh, we were filming in Tribune International Airport. Small airport. Everything used to be right in a corner where there was domestic. Now there's a small terminal also. When I walked in with my co-pilot, uh, my co-star, Ujjal Khemire, came out again for a shoot. I saw Nepal Airlines stewardess. They were wishing me, good morning, sir. Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> I was not a real captain, you know. And all the police, they were saluting me and they're saying, Namaste, sir, Janipal, sir. It made me feel good. The power of that uniform was so intense, so good. I was confused what to do, how to react to that. But then, you know, I always believed in my uniform. I always wanted to do a job, get into a job get into a position where I would wear a uniform. My father used to bring, wherever he went, he would always bring me a uniform, sometimes a uniform of a policeman, sometimes a uniform of a, an army or navy, whatever. So I was always used to this, and I always believed uniforms are not fake. The people who wear that uniform can be fake. Uniforms are original and real. So that was one of the reasons why I got into all this stuff. With that, and now, when I look back, when I turn back, you know, nothing is impossible. I can achieve what I want to do. But it's again, it's in the mind, your mindset. You have to be determined. The day I got inducted into my airline, some of my family members, my relatives, my friends, people around, they said, are you crazy? What's wrong with you? 
Why? This airline is going to shut down in no time. Down the line, 32 years, look at me today. I'm flying Airbus 320. I'll be going for 330 rating very soon. I'm one of those first uh, batch of pilots who flew 320, and my CEO is right here, Mr. Sukhat Kansakar. Thank you so much. And all these plannings and everything was not there at that time, but it came. Time moves on. There are three things. Once you lose, you lose it. It doesn't come back to you. Time. If you lose your time, it doesn't come back to you. Words. What you speak. The moment you speak, it goes out of you. You cannot retract that. It's already there. And the opportunity. The opportunity is always there. But I've always believed that being a Nepali, being a citizen of this uh, country, where there are a lot of challenges we have faced, we have been facing, and we will be facing in the days to come. But that should not put you down. That should not push you backward and say, look, I'm done and finished. Don't go into any resignation. Do not resign from your thought process. Do not resign from the, the feelings of success that you might get, the feelings of uh, victory that you will want to have one day. With the same course, when I look at, today, at the aviation industry of our country, just as our MC said, he mentioned about this U.S. Bangla crash. I've always emphasized, I'm also a resource management facilitator. I was, I train, I've been, I'm an instructor in flying also. Then I, will, I always emphasize on one thing, you know, safety begins on the ground, you fly all around the sky, and it ends on the ground. And that applies to not only airline pilots, it applies to the CEOs of the banks, it applies to any other profession. It is not worth. The world has become a very corporate world. Simple as that. I, can do, I cannot do what you can do, and trust me, you can't do what I can do. But together, we can do what others can't do. A time has come in our country where we have to start understanding what we need to do. If you look at this, Nepal Aviation Rural of Nepal. I still remember my first flight when I went to Dolpa with Captain VP Singh. Now his, his name was also Vijay Pratap Singh. I'm also Vijay. So he said, he took me to a place called Dolpa. He said, Vijay, can you see the runway? I said, where is the runway? I don't see the runway. As we went in, when made an approach, I did not see the runway until the last, probably around 500 meters. Because there was a huge lump of stone, stony mountain, you know, on the side, and we had to go like that and dive, curve in like that and go and land. When he landed the aircraft there, and I felt, wow! These captains are like gods. They were nothing. There was nothing whatsoever. Now we are very privileged, still behind all the international standards, but still we have a lot of facilities that helps us guide into the uh, uh, runways and airports. Earlier days, there was nothing. There was only non-directional beacon, VR, only direction range, you know. They were not there. But now we have GPS, we have so many facilities that helps us go. That's why I'd like to thank all my seniors, those pioneers who did all these flights and they create, uh, carved the way out for us to be where we are. And in rural aviation, while I'm talking, I'm sure I'll be answering some of the questions also because uh, if you look at the uh, geographical status of our country, now it is accessible. Within the past year, there are a lot of roads made. Yes, it's now accessible by road. But earlier days when I entered, when I was inducted in Nepal Airlines, I would say about 70% of those remote areas were inaccessible by land. So the only form of transportation was on flight. And these people from these remote areas, they knew a lot about aircrafts but they had no idea there were vehicles also. There were motorbikes, there were other stuffs for transportation. 
So for the socio-economic development of Nepal, Nepal Airlines plays a huge role. It played a huge role. Now there are so many other airlines. After the restoration of democracy, the open sky policy made it possible. There are hardly any passengers flying during our days, but now with the new advent of open sky policy, you see many, many passengers every day, hundreds and thousands of domestic passengers. That itself is proof enough to tell us that this sector has a lot of potential. Geographically very unviable, very risky place to fly, as I've already told you, the terrain, the harshness of the terrain, the harshness of the weather, climate. We don't have those sophisticated systems which would actually give us the exact format of the weather also, because it's all based on local weather. It's not a system. And beside that also, if you, have, if you look at it now, the number of aircrafts have in, increased. When you do look like, look like it's like, Practically, they are doing more than 50 flights a day. Earlier, we used to do just four or five flights and end the flight. Sky used to be ours. We used to feel like we are the masters of skies. But now, everything has changed. There's a huge competition. There's a big question mark. Are we safe? Yeah, we are safe. We are trained. Who keeps that safety margin? I keep that. I own my position as a flyer. Who does the other? ATCs, they do it. But there are instances, there are incidents and accidents that occurs. That should not be a yardstick to tell you it's unsafe to fly in Nepal. Somebody once asked me, you know, he, it was not a question, he just came with a statement, Dai, I think Nepali skies are very dangerous. I said, how can a sky be a danger? How can it be dangerous? It's always been there, and it will always be there. It is us. It's our thought process. It's the way we operate. And the lack of one letter, P, professionalism, that is what is lacking in our country. I want to do what I want to do, and I want to do the right way. If I only did my work the right way, let my bosses keep on harping, let my friends keep on saying, let my enemies keep on criticizing me, it doesn't matter. As long as I know what I'm doing is right, and I'll keep firm on that, that is the best way to development. Aviation in Nepal contribute for a better Nepal. I've always said it has been, and it will always be an integral part of our development. Fastest, safest means of transportation is flying in aviation. Look at this. More than 40 airfields in Nepal. Such a small country. But that itself is proof enough to tell you how inaccessible our country was by land. But this has changed now. Many places that you go, you can go by land also. It might take days, but it's still accessible. International airport, there's only one. But there's in the making of one, two, three. That's what they said. Lumini, we're still waiting. I don't know when it's going to happen, but once it happens, it is good. We need more. Kathmandu is very constricted. It's a very constricted valley. There are too many airlines operating. There are too many aircrafts flying around this vicinity. We need an international airport now with all the basic facilities which is lacking, but definitely they are improving now. Let's say, let's hope for that also. Lumini, Nijgarh, and Pokhara. We are hoping, are keeping our number of airlines operating, which is not right, but there are a lot of numbers. Passengers movement, look at that, 5.27 million. That's a huge number. And aircraft passenger movement is like 103, 248. And number of international carriers operating is 31. That's a huge number. Our international, the number of airline operators, that includes all these private airlines also here. We have a lot of helicopter services also. That's one of our beautiful aircrafts. Beginning of the aviation was really funny. In 1949, if I want to tell you, Gaucharan, Gaucharan. Grassy runners, grazing cattle fields used to use as airport. That's how we started DC. And then Dakotas, 
random based navigation, we had nothing. We had nothing. They were the pioneers of flights. But now we have a lot of facilities also. First aircraft inducted Pilatus Portus. That's a small, that is another case that happened somewhere in Bajura. And inadequate security and safety measures during that time. But we are still developing. They are developing. They are working. This is one industry. It's a very complex industry. It's a fast growing. If you look at throughout the world, there's a huge crisis for flyers, pilots, engineers. Every day there's a requirement for hundreds of thousands of uh, trained uh, staffs for aviation industry. So it's growing. It's time to stand on our own feet, like Himal said. It's time to believe in ourselves. If we believe in ourselves, like Sanjay said, if we believe in ourselves, if the government only believes us, the citizens of this nation, this country can take huge leaps in any sectors that we wish for. There are a number of fatal crashes and accidents that has occurred, but that is compared to the harshness of the terrain, compared to the weather factors, compared to the infrastructures that we are given. In the ratio, look at it, we're still very safe. Just because somebody comes and tells us that you are unsafe doesn't mean we are unsafe. I've been flying for the last 32 years. I've logged in more than 25,000 hours. That's a lot of hours. I have trained hundreds of flyers. I've trained hundreds of ground handling staffs and everybody. We are safe. There's nothing to worry about. What is this? The basic moderate the modern basic infra, uh, infrastructures, we are developing, but there's still something. But more than that, what I would like to under, you to understand is like aviation as a whole is one of the safest industries through which we can travel faster, we save time, but we need corporate houses, we need thinkers and visionaries to come and join us so that we can make this even more safer and smoother, and more efficient. We can keep on complaining, like we said, you know. These are just the pointers that I have, but I don't want to complain. When I know there's a ditch in front of me, I better cover that or I walk around. My principle in life I've learned is if there's a ditch, if there's a hole in front, I'll cover so that I walk safe forever. I'll not I would not walk around and wait for somebody else to fall into that ditch. We can, we can do it. There is nothing impossible. We have served. We have served this nation. We will keep on serving. But again, I say to you all, you know, Nepal is no stranger when it, come to, when it comes to facing difficulties. And this field, especially aviation, is no stranger to all these difficulties we have been facing. We have pilots. We have dedicated our entire lives. Imagine I'm in the same organization for last running 32 years. That's a long time. If you go to the West or the developed country, you know, if you don't see any changes for some time, they'll keep hopping from one spot to other. But I believe, I believe that one day, with our hard work, with the hours that we have put in, we will definitely see a better industry that is called aviation industry. This is one thing that I just started in the beginning, I told you, when my captain, Captain Vijay Pratap Singh, took me to Dolpa and he asked me, did you see the runway? Did you see the runway? And I didn't see until the last 500 meter. You know? I think most of you must have also watched the most extreme airports of the world. I was, I did the demonstration for that, I did the narratives for that also. 
But for them, for the Western standard, for the foreigners, for the expats, Lukla is the most extreme airports in the world, airport in the world. But for us, that is nothing. From their perspective, from their uh, way of seeing is because they have a lot of movement there, so it is risky. But there are far more difficult runways like Talcha. Talcha is another one. There's Lake Rara is right here, and the runway is right here. It's when you go in, you just go continuously and keep turning, and you go in line. It's an upgrade. The gradient is uphill like this. There's so many runways which is still unimaginable, which you can't even imagine, those that I've seen. Out of those 44 airfields, I think I must have operated around 38, because most of them were closed during that time. I opened up new, I did test landing for new uh, runways also without any information, few information that we had. But still, that's the only way of life. That's the only way of life for our brothers and sisters living in those remote areas. Go, have a look. Seeing is believing. If you don't see, you don't believe. And to believe, you have to experience. That is the landing phase of localize. See that? Boom. And that's the dead end. If you don't control, it goes right at the dead end there. Boom, your nose hits you right there. This is now. When we started, it had nothing of this sort at all. It was all rocky, gravel, and every time we landed, I will tell you one in incident that occurred with my senior captain, Captain Santos Sarma, sir, my instructor also. We landed, we went to the parking bay. Next thing we see is the expression of all these people. And I, I said, I didn't know, I was new, you know, relatively new. And I said, what? I, I had no idea. Then I asked Santos Dai to shut down. And he said, he shut down. I think there's something obviously we shut down. We did our drills. Next thing we realized was there was the big pebble that went and hit the belly of our twin order. The drain line got busted. The entire field started coming out. Very risky, very dangerous. With that note, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I would always like to tell you and believe in yourself. Think positive. Think, uh, think not only for yourself, think for your nation, think for your company. And I would love to say, love your profession more than your company. If you love your profession, you automatically love your company also. And that's my slogan. I've always believed in saying, Jai Chandra Surya.